Shalom and uh, welcome to the Middle East Report. In this programme today, we'll be discussing a proposed BDS legislation in Ireland that's currently going through the Irish Parliament that would actually bring prosecution against anyone buying Israeli goods. And a warm welcome to the programme. And uh, today's guest is not only a good friend of mine, but also a good friend of the uh, Christian community and this programme, the Middle East Sport, Stephen Jaffe. I need no introduction, do I, Stephen? <laughs> um, you're very popular out there, um, particularly amongst our, our, our viewers who really love the great work that you're doing uh, in representing the Jewish community and reaching out to the Christian community. So it's a huge, huge honour, Simon, the work that I do. Uh, it's a huge privilege and fantastic to be on the Revelation TV. Thank you. Pleasure. And uh, Stephen, it was also great to share a, a platform with you uh, in uh, Belfast at the Ulster Hall, uh, thanks to the great work being carried out by ICEJ Ireland and Brian Sylvester in particular uh, for inviting me. Um, uh, what was so uh, moving about the event was the incredible warmth. Um, what are your thoughts on, on that special night, which was a taste of tabernacles? It, it was hugely en encouraging, Simon. This is, takes place in a hall in this, right in the centre of Belfast. There were well over 500 people uh, present. There was music, there was dance, there was praise. They had even you and me speaking at it. I think it was a hugely encouraging uh, event. There were representatives of the very small Jewish community in, in Northern Ireland there as well. And it was so important for them to see Christians who wish to stand with Israel, stand with the Jewish community in the face of, uh, let's face it, rising anti-Semitism. Yeah. Um, uh, and personally, I'd like to uh, thanks for all of those who looked after me uh, in Ireland and Northern Ireland. They include uh, Brian Sylvester and his lovely assistant, as well as Paul and Pamela Coulter looked after me and my father so well in both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. But um, it is, and we're talking about this hideous uh, proposed legislation um, that represents the, the worst of the BDS movement, boycotts, divestments and sanctions, um, Stephen. But uh, can you give us a bit of a, a background briefing? In Northern Ireland, uh, and I've experienced incredibly strong support amongst the evangelical Christians in support of Israel. Israel and, and their demonstration of love for Israel is, is, is beyond anything that I've seen in the rest of the UK. But the story is very different when we look at the Republic of Ireland. Um, why is the Republic of Ireland generally so hostile towards Israel and so supportive of the Palestinian cause? Well, I, I would say even in Northern Ireland, the situation is quite split. So we have uh, many of the supporters of, of this particular bill uh, would actually be coming from Northern Ireland. So we have Sinn Féin, for example, who are one of the prime supporters of the bill. That's a, an all-Ireland uh, party. And that you find in Northern Ireland that there is a split on the issue of... Uh, the Arab-Israel conflict, very largely on, on kind of party political terms. So the unionists' parties tend to be supportive of Israel uh, and the nationalist support parties would tend to be uh, pro-Palestinian. In the Republic of Ireland, you don't have a counter-narrative, really. There is a very strong uh, support, uh, as they would see it, for the, for the Palestinians. Uh, why is that? Well, I think there's all sorts of reasons, uh, Simon. If you look historically, for instance, uh, Ireland's narrative is one of revolt against British uh, colonialism, as they see it, and then they would regard the Palestinians, they would say, as uh, suffering a similar fate of dispossession. So there's all that kind of history, historical uh, baggage. Uh, if you go back uh, to the Second World War, Ireland was actually neutral in the fight against uh, Hitler, uh, the Irish head of state, gave his condolences to the German people on the death of Hitler. That's how far they took their neutrality. And uh, very few Jewish refugees were allowed uh, to enter uh, what was then the Irish Free State. You have to go back also, I would say, to the, to the Troubles in uh, Northern Ireland, where Sinn Féin uh, and the IRA uh, considered themselves close allies of uh, the Palestine Liberation Organization. I remember growing up in Belfast, there was a mural on the wall there with Yasser Arafat, and it said one struggle. In other words, 
there was a common struggle which the IRA and the PLO were engaged in, world revolution. They collaborated in terms of training, in terms of arms procurement. So there's that element uh, in it uh, as well. Uh, I would also say that Ireland is a country which is being undergoing tremendous transformation. Uh, it was once one of the most strongest Catholic countries uh, in Europe and the Catholic Church had tremendous authority. There is, of course, that strand of antipathy towards uh, Jews and Judaism, which was reflected uh, going back in terms of Catholic liturgy, in terms of sermons. Uh, the Catholic Church has, has shifted its position after uh, the Second World War, but there's that strain there of anti-Judaism. Uh, Ireland is today uh, one of the least traditional Catholic countries in Europe. That's a very sh a strong shift of opinion. Uh, the Catholic Church has lost a lot of authority. What you may find taking its place is this kind of leftist ideo ideology which would see Israel as an apartheid state, as a colonial state. So you have, a, I would say, a toxic mix of factors there in the, in the Republic of Ireland which mitigates against a balanced view even uh, of the Arab-Israel conflict and a very one-sided view. But I want to say something which I think is very important. Absolutely. That there are many Irish people who do not uh, hold this anti-Israel perspective. Either they have no view at all or, or they actively dislike it. And I don't want to uh, bracket the entire Irish people uh, with this kind of anti-Israel tag because actually there are many, many uh, Irish people who do not share it. Absolutely, and I've met quite a few of them as well. Exactly. And um, Stephen, uh, currently in the Irish Parliament, uh, they are looking to um, pass what is considered the most anti-Israel legislation um, anywhere in the Western world um, in support of the Boycott, Divestments and Sanctions Movement, the BDS, um, and it's entitled the Economic Activity Bill. Uh, can you explain and tell us about this uh, shocking legislation that in itself sounds innocent enough, but it's extremely sinister? So it is only designed to deal with Israel. Uh, the, the terminology of the, of the bill uh, means that it would only apply to Israel. Any other disputed territory in the world will not come under the uh, ambit of this uh, proposed piece of uh, legislation. That's not surprising because those who are uh, supportive of the bill uh, are uh, extremely partisan in their views regarding Israel. Uh, the, the, you know, the song, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is, is where many of these people are coming from. Uh, not all of them, but those who are driving force behind uh, the bill. This piece of legislation is uh, crude, uh, to deal with a, a, a what is in essence uh, a political dispute and it's quite vicious because it targets Irish people who are perhaps traveling in uh, Israel on pilgrimage or on holiday in ways which uh, I think many Irish people even those who think they are supportive of the bill have never really thought about or understood so it's coming from uh, independent an independent senator that's the upper house of the Irish Parliament uh, it has the support, uh, I've said, of, of Sinn Féin. Uh, even more shockingly, I would say, it has the support of the main opposition party called Fianna Fáil. It does not have the support of the Irish government, but the Irish government is a minority government uh, in the Irish parliament and therefore does not have the votes in the Irish parliament uh, necessary to defeat the bill. So let's have a look now at uh, this uh, excellent news report produced by I24 that looks into this proposed Irish legislation against Israel. We are doing commerce with people who are committing war crimes. Ireland has always been a vocal supporter of the Palestinian cause, but today it took an unprecedented step. Those in favour say ta. ta. Those against say nil. Yeah. The Irish Senate voting to pass a bill making trade with Israeli settlements a criminal offence. How can we condemn the settlements as illegal, as theft of land and resources, but then happily buy the proceeds of this crime? A bill criminalising the importation of goods from settlements in any illegally occupied territory, but with one specific country clearly in mind. Israel is an apartheid state, and yes, we must stand against apartheid. If the bill passes the next Senate reading in Ireland's lower house, it could be punishable by up to five years in prison to sell products from Israeli settlements. A step some thought doesn't go far enough. Personally, I would like to see sanctions against Israel for crimes against humanity. 
the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, an emotive issue in a country that identifies strongly with the Palestinian side. It is appalling. And if you want to know what the people of Palestine, you say that you're speaking on behalf of the people of Palestine. If you want to know what the people of Palestine want, ask the Palestinian farmers in the gallery there and they will tell you. It's a private member's bill backed by every party but the ruling Fine Gael, a minority government. Nobody speaking out against the principle of the bill, the foreign minister only warning it would violate European Union law and would weaken Ireland's influence. And my fear is that the consequence of Ireland taking a significantly different position to everybody else in the European Union, in fact virtually everybody else in the world, all of a sudden undermines my capacity to be seen as somebody who both sides can at least talk to, even though I clearly advocate strongly for Palestinians all the time. Israel was quick to respond, calling the bill a populist, dangerous and extremist boycott initiative that harmed the chances for dialogue and warning it was watching what would happen next. But Israel has no allies in Dublin. In the litany uh, of executions, slaughter, mass murder, uh, the imprisonment of children uh, in military uh, courts, the continued demolition of homes um, and further illegal incursions into Palestinian lands. While the campaign to boycott Israel's settlement enterprise in the West Bank has pocketed a win. Elon Levy, I-24 News. So let me just sum up the danger of this proposed uh, legislation that's currently going through the Irish Parliament. So if you are, uh, are a citizen of the Republic of Ireland, you want to visit the Holy Land, you visit Israel, you uh, go to uh, the old city in Jerusalem, you buy some souvenirs or you buy one of Israel's famous wines from the Golan Heights, you could be prosecuted with a huge uh, financial bill or a five-year prison sentence. Uh, I've just described the consequences of this bill. That This uh, really does punish the Irish people. It really does punish um, the small Jewish Irish community and particularly the strong support there is amongst Irish Christians who uh, want to visit Israel, who visit Israel, could be prosecuted under this law. How has this been allowed to happen? Well, I think that one of the fundamental reasons behind the bill, Simon, is for about the last 10 years, uh, campaigners in the Republic have tried to promote a consumer boycott of Israeli goods, and it has failed. Uh, it ha trade between uh, the Republic of Ireland and Israel is booming. Uh, so having failed to win over popular support, they're resorting to criminal law. And as you've said, uh, ordinary Irish citizens visiting uh, could find themselves doing very normal things, hiring an Israeli tour guide to show you the Western Wall and the Jewish quarter of Jerusalem is a criminal act uh, under this uh, bill. Uh, that is, I would say, not just a, a vicious attack on the rights of Irish citizens, but it's an attack on Judaism itself because the bill uh, characterizes uh, Israeli Jews at the Western Wall or at the cave of the patriarchs in Hebron, or in Rachel's tomb outside of Bethlehem. It characterizes Jewish worshippers at those sites as illegal settlers, even if they don't live there, even if they're just visiting there. That is how crude this uh, bill is. Uh, and yet, as we've seen, it carries a majority in the Irish Senate, which is the upper house of the Irish Parliament, and it has secured a majority in the uh, lower house as well. I have to, to ask you, currently, uh, as the current time that we're recording this programme, the current stage of this bill is that it's with the uh, Irish Foreign Affairs Select Committee to examine it. Um, then uh, I think it probably goes back to, to the lower house of the Irish Parliament and then Senate and then the President has got to ratify it. Um, in your opinion, uh, we know that the Irish government is against this, which is, which is a really good thing. Um, but what is the implication of this actually becoming law in Ireland? Well, I think uh, there's two questions here. One, would it be implemented? And if it did, we've talked about how it, it would impact on ordinary Irish citizens. Even if it wasn't implemented in that way, I think it would be uh, a, a huge matter of principle. I think it would be uh, saying to uh, Irish citizens who don't agree with this hostile uh, Israel uh, approach that they're criminals. Uh, and that is not a good situation in any democracy. So I think the impact for Ireland, both in terms of its own democracy, in terms of its standing, uh, both 
in the Middle East if it wishes to have any part in, in trying to bring the uh, Israelis and Palestinians and, and the wider Arab world together, well then that will have gone because Ireland will have presented itself as being so partisan and one-sided. And then there's a whole issue that uh, I'm sure we're going to touch on is what would the economic impact be uh, for Ireland as well. So I think there's very important uh, points of principle if this bill uh, does pass. Excellent. And uh, we're now joined on the phone by uh, Israel's um, acting ambassador to the Republic of Ireland, Afir Kariv. Um, Afir, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the Middle East Report today. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a great honour and a pleasure for me to be with you today. Thank you. And uh, personally, what is it like uh, to be representing the nation of Israel at the highest diplomatic level, fulfilling the dreams and aspirations of your ancestors for thousands of years who longed for the re-establishment of the Jewish state in the heart of the Middle East? Well, thank you. For me to be an ambassador of Israel and represent the, the, the Jewish state here, the, the state of the Jewish people here in Ireland, is a great honour and privilege. I feel that I'm taking part in an ongoing and exceptional historic process that started over 120 years ago, basically, and certainly for the last uh, 71 years since the establishment of uh, the state, we've been sitting, we've been uh, witnessing the fulfillment of ancient prophecies in gathering of the exiles and the re-establishment of the, of the Jewish state in the land of our forefathers, so it is a great honor for me. Absolutely. I feel, uh, I feel blessed that my family has uh, contributed to the establishment of the State of Israel starting early last century. And I'm trying in my turn to, to give my small part in uh, serving the state and defending its interests. Well, fantastic. I think you've got one of the hardest jobs in uh, Israel diplomacy. But can you share with our, our viewers what your role is uh, in the Republic of Ireland serving as Israel's ambassador? Well, like uh, any other ambassador in any other state, uh, my role is to represent the interests and the positions of my country, uh, of Israel here in Ireland, um, to defend its interests, to promote its interests, to face, both, to face challenges on the one hand, and um, uh, using opportunities and trying to utilize opportunities to promote relations between Israel and Ireland. Yeah. And uh, Ambassador, Ambassador Koriv, uh, you, you recently wrote an excellent article uh, on the online um, Irish newspaper called the Irish Journal concerning the shameful proposed legislation known as the Economic Activity Bill that's currently in the process of becoming law in the Irish Senate. Now, you wrote that if this law were to be passed, it would threaten to make Ireland look like the most extreme anti Israel um, and not pro-Palestinian country outside of the Middle East and Iran. Uh, that is an extremely strong statement. Um, what are your concerns regarding this proposed BDS legislation that's currently going through the Irish Parliament? Well, it is a strong statement because it's a very grave issue. Um, but before we uh, dive a bit into the detail, just, just to uh, remind everyone that the Irish government is opposed to, to this legislation, to this bill, and we appreciate it, uh, its very strong position on that. It's been uh, promoted by other uh, political forces in the island, but the government itself, the Irish government, is opposed to it. Yeah. Um, I think the most disturbing uh, point in this, uh, the most disturbing issue in this bill is uh, this attempt to negate uh, the Jewish people's uh, connection to uh, what is now called the West Bank, which is Judea and Samaria, and uh, to disassociate uh, the Jewish people from the places he was born. I think that many people in Ireland do not realize um, the gravity and the deep meaning of this, uh, of this bill. Absolutely. And Ambassador Kariv, um, this uh, 
proposed legislation has uh, will have a big impact on um, not only uh, Ireland's uh, Jewish community, but also the strong support there is in Ireland amongst um, evangelical Christians who love Israel. And the fact that if they visit Israel and they go into the old city and they buy souvenirs or they buy uh, one of uh, Israel's most famous wines from the Golan Heights, that they could be prosecuted under this law uh, with a very hefty fine or even a five-year prison sentence. Um, what does this mean for the Irish people and why should they suffer thanks to this uh, hideous legislation? Um, well, in a sense, the, the, the answer to the question is in the question itself. I mean, why should the Irish people uh, suffer? Um, this bill is unprecedented. This is the most extreme anti-Israel legislation outside uh, maybe Iran and some other parts of the Middle East. And it imposes uh, punishments on Irish citizens and on any other person who so-called dares to deal with Jews in the birthplace of, uh, of their nation. Um, it's up to, I would say, it's up to the Irish people who feel uh, hurt by it or feel jeopardized by it to speak up. Excellent. And um, does this uh, proposed legislation deal with the uh, shocking human rights abuses that we see within the Palestinian Authority and also in Gaza by Hamas? Do they, do they actually address the issue of incitement to hatred and the glorification of terrorism that we see in the Palestinian media and education system? Uh, do they discuss the horrendous persecution that Christians face uh, living under the Palestinian Authority and also those living under Hamas? control in, in Gaza? Or, and do they also mention the fact that there is a, a terrible threat to Israel and Israeli security posed by Palestinian terrorism? Is any of these big issues mentioned at all in this bill? No, nothing has been mentioned. Um, uh, there's no attempt by the bill, by the uh, instigators of the bill to even to pretend to be uh, balanced in any way. It's completely one-sided. It's very much, it's uh, completely discriminatory against Israel. Uh, it singles, uh, singles out Israel. Um, there's no, again, there's no even an attempt to show it it's uh, something that is uh, 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 balanced or, or right. And uh, Ambassador Kariv, um, have you uh, got any advice uh, in terms of our viewers, particularly those living in the Republic of Ireland, about how that they can challenge this uh, racist and hate-filled uh, legislation that only targets Israel and supports the boycott, divestments and sanctions movement? Well, I, I'm the ambassador of Israel in Ireland. It's not, uh, it's not for me to tell uh, Irish citizens how to do and, uh, and, and what to do. Um, I've been living here for almost six months. Ireland is a free and democratic country, and uh, everybody who wants to make his voice heard knows how to do it. But this is not this is not for me to tell the Irish people what to do and how to do it. And uh, finally, my last question to you, Ambassador uh, Kariv. Um, what are the implications if this bill becomes law in the Republic of Ireland? Will it have on Israeli-Irish relations? Um, again, if it becomes law, and I, and I emphasize again that we know that the Irish government opposes the law, and uh, I'm also having some uh, conversation with many people here in Ireland, making sure that our views have been conveyed and have been uh, understood. So we still hope that uh, the bill does not uh, become a law. If it does, it will certainly have uh, far-reaching uh, implications on Israeli-Irish uh, relations. Again, since it touches upon very deep issues of belonging, of national identity, of history, and these are aspects that are important that are being understood also by those who supported uh, the bill here. And uh, I believe that many of the people who support it or were brought to support this bill uh, are not necessarily aware of all the implications and all the deep meanings of this, uh, of this bill. Uh, Ambassador Kariv, uh, thank you so much for being able to join us on the Middle East Hello. Report and giving your perspective. I uh, just want to let you know that in terms of Revelation TV and our viewers Hello. that we're 100% behind you and supporting the great work that you're doing in, uh, in representing Israel in the Republic of Ireland.
And uh, Stephen, uh, this uh, bill is currently being sponsored by uh, Senator Francis Black, who in 2016 signed a letter where she supported a total boycott of uh, Israeli uh, goods and services. Uh, and not just with this proposed legislation that wants to boycott Israeli goods from Judea and Samaria, which is the biblical heartland of Israel, uh, East Jerusalem, and the Golan Heights. Um, what is her motivation? Because clearly she is very, very hostile to Israel. Well, she's also campaigning at the moment uh, for a boycott of Eurovision. She's a, a, a singer uh, herself and uh, quite extraordinarily, I would say, uh, seeking to boycott a, a music festival for the sole reason uh, that it's being held in uh, Israel. And. Uh, by the way, Ireland's uh, entrance for the Eurovision Song Contest has come under uh, intense, I would say, bullying on, on social media to try and uh, have uh, his withdrawal from, from the competition. So she's coming from a position, uh, I've said it, from the river to the sea, Palestine uh, will be free. This bill, I think we can quite safely say, would not be the end of the matter as far as she's concerned and many of the backers of the bill. They're also calling, by the way, for uh, Israel's uh, ambassador to be expelled uh, from Ireland. That's the official policy of Sinn Féin. Uh, that is a call that has been made, for instance, by Dublin City Council, uh, which passed a BDS resolution uh, recently. So uh, this bill is not the be all and end all. They're pushing other uh, initiatives which uh, clearly have the aim of isolating Israel, of weakening it, because ultimately they don't want Israel there at all. Yeah, and I'm going to ask you the, a very similar question to, to that that I asked um, uh, Israel's ambassador to the Republic of Ireland, uh, Stephen, uh, and that is, um, in this bill, is there any mention of Palestinian terrorism? Is there any mention of Palestinian incitement and glorification uh, of uh, Palestinian terrorism against Israel in, in their media, in their education system? Is there any discussion on the... Uh, hideous human rights abuses being carried out by the Palestinian Authority and Hamas against their own people uh, that would criticise the regime? Is there any kind of discussion on the persecution of uh, Christians within the Palestinian Authority or under Hamas in Gaza? Um, and is there any talk about um, potential projects for real peace and reconciliation between the two? And finally, is there any mention of the Palestinian Authority's failure to actually ever reach a peace agreement with Israel? Well, the, the emphatic answer to that, Simon, is no. Uh, and uh, the whole tenor of the bill is that Israeli settlements in Judea and Samaria are the only block to peace in the Middle East. That is the narrative uh, of uh, those who support the bill. They don't want to discuss any of the issues uh, that you've just raised there. We could add to what, what you've said, the fact that Iran is an aspiring nuclear power that has said again and again that it wants to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Uh, very uh, shortly after the recent debate in the Irish Parliament uh, regarding this bill, the Iranian ambassador was in Ireland to celebrate uh, the anniversary of the Iranian Revolution. Uh, Fiona Foyle's uh, foreign affairs spokesperson person met the Iranian um, ambassador and in his statement after the meeting said they had discussed uh, shared matters of interest. No matters of concern about Iranians' human rights uh, violations, no concern about Christians in Iran or elsewhere in the Middle East or Iran's expansionist uh, policies across the Middle East, its endorsement of terrorism. None of that was raised uh, but uh, there was probably talk about uh, Ireland uh, increasing its trade with Iran. That is what you're talking about. That is the double standards uh, behind uh, the, many of those who are promoting uh, this bill. Uh, and so the answer to your question is no and no again. So let's have a look now at uh, this uh, video um, that really does expose the heart of uh, many in the Irish Parliament regarding their very hostile and anti-Israel views. There was one, there was the other one. Uh, the Irish Parliament boycott Israeli goods. Oh, did I, sorry. Yeah, I want to... Okay, so I got confused. Sorry about that. Thank you. And this is produced by the Ameri Arab American Institute. Yeah, they think it's good propaganda. Uh, 
not just talk, come back at this one and talk out of this. I've seen the results of the bombing of hospitals, of schools, of uh, sewage treatment plants. It is appalling. And if you want to know what the people of Palestine, you say that you're speaking on behalf of the people of Palestine. If you want to know what the people of Palestine want, ask the Palestinian farmers. We've seen the most desperate and brutal violations of people's right to protest against injustice, against occupation, against the taking of the very ground from under people. Israel is an apartheid state. Any of us who have been there know that. Once you know that, it changes you. Though these settlements are repeatedly condemned as illegal by the EU, UN and Irish government, they continue to extract valuable natural resources and agricultural produce. These goods are then exported and sold on shelves around the world, including in Ireland, to pay for occupation. There is a clear hypocrisy here. How can we condemn the settlements as illegal, as theft of land and resources, but then happily buy the proceeds of this crime? We must be clear on this. Israeli settlements in the West Bank are war crimes. This is what we're dealing with, and I'm amazed at how relaxed people can be about it, as if trading in the proceeds of war crimes is not a big deal. I witnessed with my own eyes the crushing indignity of a Palestinian community cut off from their water supply so that it could be diverted instead to support an Israeli chicken farm. That is horrendous, and the injustice of it will stay with me forever. That commercial settlement built on stolen land beyond international recognised borders is a war crime and I know I'm repeating myself today and I'm asking my colleagues across the House today, is the moral response to simply condemn this as illegal but then ask how much for the eggs? Is there not a deep hypocrisy in that position? For a country that prides itself on upholding humanitarian principles and international law, this is unacceptable and I believe it's time we stood clearly against this injustice. We are... Uh, as you can see from that, we, we need to really give these uh, Irish senators a kind of lesson in history and politics of Israel and the Middle East. I'm quite astonished by some of the accusations there, stealing water, uh, that Israel is committing war crimes, Stephen, when we consider that it was the Israelis have been the only nation that have offered the Palestinians their own nationhood. The, when the Jordanians were in occupation of that territory, they never gave the Palestinians anything, nor the Egyptians when they're in control of Gaza. And it, it's the Israelis who built their schools, their infrastructure, the roads, the hospitals, everything they have now is, is thanks to Israel. Uh, uh, and yet we're seeing that Israel is being condemned here by, by Irish senators and um, the complete hypocrisy of this. But we have to ask the most important question is that, that this proposed legislation won't hurt Israel. It will hurt the Irish people. And we'll talk about that more uh, later on the programme. But will also really, really hurt the Palestinians. So can you share with us the impact that this legislation will have on ordinary Palestinian uh, workers? So one of the senators in that clip, uh, Simon said, asked the Palestinian farmers uh, about the uh, impact of, of what the bill would have and, and what uh, the, their situation. I would ask that senator to ask the same question to the Palestinian workers in the Soda Stream factory, who, which was in uh, Malay Adumim, uh, an Israeli community, uh, had to shut down uh, following uh, international protests. That uh, factory has been moved into Israel proper. Those Palestinian workers lost their jobs as a result of the kind of uh, political extremism that we saw in in, in that clip so let him ask those people who were who had good jobs in that factory who wanted those jobs to continue and lost them whether uh, his approach is actually in the interests of the Palestinians themselves uh, and I think that would be a difficult answer that he would hear back from those Palestinians who worked in that factory. Uh, absolutely and um, you, you mentioned earlier in the program about the links between Sinn Féin, the IRA and uh, the whole Palestinian nationalist movements in the 60s and 70s and their support for the PLO and the PLO uh, terrorism. Do you think this also is paying, uh, playing a major factor in underlining their support for this proposed uh, BDS legislation against Israel? 
Well, there is that history and baggage there, absolutely. Uh, so uh, a, a mural on the Falls Road today, uh, a very big uh, photograph of Leela Khalid, who was a, a terrorist with the Popular Front of Liberation of Palestine, involved in the hijacking of aircraft. Uh, in this poster, she's shown with a Kalashnikov uh, rifle. So I think we're seeing something uh, which I think reflects to locally in Northern Ireland. Since the uh, peace process in Northern Ireland, people are deflecting their militancy, I think, uh, on the Arab-Israel conflict, and therefore uh, they're flying Palestinian flags, uh, they're adopting ever more uh, extreme measures. The Israeli football team, for example, played a f uh, an international friendly with Northern Ireland last September. They wanted that match called off, uh, Sinn Féin, because the team came from apartheid Israel. When that team had on it uh, Arabs, Druze, uh, the, the captain was a Circassian Muslim, uh, as well as Jews, so the most uh, diverse football team uh, from the Middle East playing in Belfast. They wanted that match cancelled. So they're uh, heading more and more into extreme and negative policies, which I think reflects local factors in, in Northern Ireland as much as it does any reality in the Middle East. Uh, and also, I think we now need to talk about the uh, long-term economic consequences of this legislation for the Irish economy. Um, and I'm just going to read through my notes on this one because it's important to get it right. That this proposed bill could have a huge impact upon the big US internet giants based in Ireland uh, because of their uh, low taxes, uh, such as Apple, Google, Microsoft and Facebook and uh, that these US uh, internet companies that are based in Ireland because of their low tax corporate rates, and currently uh, these companies represent 67% of all foreign investment into Ireland, uh, might have to make a choice between using uh, Ireland as a tax haven if this law is passed, or they would have to turn away from their massive um, financial investment in Israel with Israel's famous startup nation. Uh, and, and so therefore, how dangerous could this bill be to the Irish economy that needs these Irish firms? Because they're not going to choose Ireland. Well, I think what you've just said uh, points to the very strong possibility that the bill will not actually pass uh, because that's so not in the interests uh, of the Irish economy. Uh, just a, a, I'll give you one instance of this. Intel, uh, a massive uh, multinational corporation based in the States, just announced very recently $11 billion, that's billion dollars of investment into Israel uh, regarding the future uh, production and development of its uh, products. Ireland would have been a competitor for that investment. Uh, Ireland ha also has benefited hugely, as you said, low corporation tax with multinationals uh, coming into Ireland and providing uh, so much employment. But as you say, if this bill becomes law, then it places these companies in a very difficult situation because of uh, American legislation uh, against uh, boycotting uh, Israel in particular. So I think what you've just said is a, is a very strong indication that perhaps this bill will not actually be enacted. Yeah, I just want to read you this because this is astonishing. This is from um, written by uh, Audrey uh, Kittry, who is a fellow at the Foundation for Defense of uh, Democracies in Washington, D.C., and also uh, a, a legal expert. And uh, this is his quote on the Irish uh, proposed uh, BDS legislation. Uh, While Olin considers East Jerusalem an Israeli settlement, the US government recognises Jerusalem as, its, as Israel's capital. If Apple fires an engineer because it wants to avoid problems with the Irish law, he insists on telecommunicating from his home in East Jerusalem. Would Apple be violating uh, US laws by participating in Ireland's boycotts? And the answer is yes. So this has huge, huge economic implications for Ireland's economy. And, and if if these big internet giants uh, based in the US then decide that it's a choice between Israel and Ireland, uh, they're going to choose Israel, aren't they? And there's another economic aspect as well, Simon, which I think we should say that the Irish government has recognised that if this uh, bill passes, that Ireland would, uh, that they would have breached EU law because uh, they're having their own, uh, setting their own trading terms uh, and therefore they would face uh, fines and punishments uh, from the EU. So that again is a, an indication that this bill, if it passes, would have very real uh, economic consequences uh, for Ireland and therefore I'm hopeful 
uh, that it will not actually uh, pass. But can you talk, uh, if we need to also to discuss the spiritual implications of this as well, um, knowing that uh, if Ireland passes this law and it becomes, uh, becomes law in Ireland, um, then we know that uh, Ireland will fall foul of Genesis 12, uh, God's promise to Abraham that I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And, and this will then bring a, a huge curse upon the nation of Ireland. Well, the, the point that I made earlier in the programme that uh, this bill treats Jews at prayer at our holiest sites as illegal settlers, I think points to a terrible spiritual malaise. Uh, and I have to tell you, Simon, that some of the, the supporters of this bill come from the Christian world. Christian Aid is a prime supporter of this bill. And if any viewers are supporting Christian Aid, they should know that that organisation is uh, one of the main supporters of the bill, as is an organisation called Trukara, which is the main Catholic development uh, charity. So I think it, it points to a spiritual sickness, which uh, I, I hear what you say. I think it, it's, it's bad news for Ireland on all aspects if, if this bill was ever enacted. Uh, and do you think that the, um, the Irish people themselves are being given the full facts regarding this proposed legislation? Uh, I mean, I've had a look at some of their kind of news reports and we're, we're incredibly anti-Israel. So are the people of Ireland actually be given the right facts and the implications for Irish people and anyone who wanting to visit Israel or to invest in Israel's startup nation would face prosecution under this law. And also the Irish economy would suffer tremendously if this law became, if it was passed. So I think the answer to that is not that no. There are some uh, good and strong voices in the Irish Republic. I'll mention Alan Shatter, who's a, a former Irish government minister uh, and a member of the Jewish community. He's written uh, on these terms, uh, but actually in the Israeli press. So I think many uh, Irish people are simply not aware of the very crude nature of this uh, bill, its enormous scope, uh, and as you said, the potential damage that it would do uh, to themselves uh, as uh, a, an economy in terms of investment and jobs. So the answer is that has not really featured in the, in the kind of the media attention in Ireland itself. Uh, and I think that's something that uh, is wrong and the Irish people should be informed much more fully as to the very crude nature of, of this piece of legislation. And uh, we, we know that Israel does have strong Christian supporters. Uh, one organisation comes to mind in particular, and that's um, Ireland, uh, sorry, Israel Ireland Alliance, which is uh, twinned with uh, the Israel Britain Alliance. Um, can you share what they're doing uh, in terms of uh, campaigning against this proposed legislation? So it's, it's a grassroots organisation, Simon, and uh, it does excellent work. If people uh, want to do something practical to show their opposition to this bill, they can uh, like the Facebook page of. of uh, Ireland Israel Alliance uh, and uh, they're growing. Uh, they have uh, considerable support on social media uh, and they can uh, like uh, both the page and the various uh, posts about this particular bill. So that, I think that's an excellent uh, port of call. I co-chair a group called the Northern Ireland Friends of Israel. It's a separate jurisdiction. We're not uh, impacted by the bill directly, although I've already mentioned uh, some of the kind of all Ireland aspects of those who are supporting uh, the bill. But I think uh, Ireland Israel Alliance is really a doing a first class job in a difficult environment uh, to, to uh, increase the kind of points that we've raised in this programme in the consciousness of the Irish people and viewers can support that uh, from wherever they are, whether it's the Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland or the rest of the United Kingdom, uh, to show them that, that they don't stand alone, that there are people uh, who follow the, uh, the, this bill and are very concerned by it. So I would certainly encourage viewers to actually show that support. So let's have an, a look now on an excellent video produced by our uh, Ireland Israel Alliance that uh, looks into the implications for anyone visiting Israel with this proposed BDS legislation that's currently going through the Irish Parliament. <laughs>
understand that this is a place. This is a place where you have at somewhere close to three million Christians coming every year. In in, uh, in December alone, you have almost two hundred thousand pilgrims coming to see these these places. You have you have people saving up money for years and years just trying to get here because of the the, the rich and in this case tragic religious significance of the, of the place. Hello, my name is Norman Ivers and uh, today we are in the Old City uh, exercising our freedoms. Uh, this is a letter that we sent today to some representatives in the Irish Parliament. My wife and I were visiting the Holy City of Jerusalem today, visiting the holiest sites for Christians as well as Muslims and Jewish sites around the Old City. It occurred to us that these freedoms appear now to be in jeopardy due to the Francis Black Bill that is being advanced through the Irish Parliament. Our family as well as many friends, acquaintances and other religious groups have been exercising the same freedoms for centuries. It is inconceivable that there might come a day in Ireland when fundamental religious rights and freedoms become penalized. Enclosed also with this letter is a small souvenir bought in the holy city of Jerusalem. These types of souvenirs and religious artifacts are purchased and sent daily by thousands from around the world. We're sincerely, Norman and Thank you. And uh, well done, uh, Norma and uh, Karen there, uh, making your stand. And uh, yeah, my heart goes out to, to our viewers, particularly those living in the Republic of Ireland, that what is happening in Ireland is a, a disgrace uh, to your nation. And uh, this is the time that you need to speak up. And this is the time that you need to pray. And this is the time that you need to write to your political representatives because the consequences for Ireland, not only for religious freedom, but for uh, Ireland's economic well-being and also Ireland's as a nation with its relationship with Israel is in jeopardy and uh, you need to make your voices known very, very clearly in your opposition to this proposed legislation. Um, this is what's needed now, isn't it? Um, time to uh, come out of apathy and, and really fight this uh, legislation from those small, brave um, Christians that are in Ireland who have God's understanding for Israel and the Jewish people. I think it's a wake-up call for all of us, Simon, because this legislation uh, and the ideas behind it are not confined to Ireland in any sense. Here in the, in the United Kingdom, in sections of uh, the Labour Party, there's similar agenda there, and I'm sure that there are many uh, in, in the UK who are looking very closely to see what's happening in Ireland with the intention of, of trying to bring similar legislation here and other similar initiatives. So this is about all of us. I don't think it's a yeah. peculiarly Irish uh, problem uh, and I think it's for all of us to make our stand now uh, there is no I think being silent uh, hoping it will all go away uh, hoping that uh, you know that this is just a, a passing phase we're well well past that and I, I would say to, to viewers where do you stand where do you stand on this issue because uh, you know, you can try and be silent on it, you can try and confine your opposition to your private homes or your own churches, but actually this is about our country and its future and therefore I call on you, uh, don't cross the road, don't remain silent, but actually uh, speak out, speak out because this is about your right to worship the way you worship, to believe what you believe. This is all our fights as Jews, as Christians, as people of good faith. Uh, so please, now, let's get active uh, and make our case. Uh, we're down to about three minutes of the, the programme now, Stephen. So in a practical way, you know, what can our viewers do um, to oppose this very, very dangerous uh, proposed legislation that's going through the Irish Parliament right now? Well, we've talked about the Ireland-Israel Alliance, and I think that is the frontline organisation at a grassroots level. 
uh, dealing with this matter in the Republic. There are many initiatives here in the UK which people uh, should really get involved in. Uh, we've talked about the uh, Britain-Israel Alliance and their email campaigns. Uh, it's so easy now to, to sign up to this. It takes literally seconds and uh, your email is sent to your elected representative. Uh, the, all, the, all the hard work is done by the Israel-Britain Alliance in terms of the message, in terms of, uh, of sending it out. So that, that is now, I think it's imperative that anyone who has a heart for Israel takes part in, in these uh, initiatives as well. And of course, to get involved in the Christian ministries of people who are coming from the Christian community, uh, which uh, stand with Israel. Uh, they need support uh, really uh, badly. They, they need uh, encouragement. So get involved, get involved in their churches, get involved in these Christian ministries. Uh, the work of the Israel-Britain Alliance, We Believe in Israel, is another grassroots organization. They're all out there, and it's never been easier to show your support for Israel, but it's never been more important. Absolutely. And also to include in that the work of ICJ Ireland, both in the north and the south. Uh, I think that's an also... Well, indeed, one of the one of the most important Christian ministries. There are others, of course, but they are. Uh, I think the work that they do internationally, globally, as well as in Ireland and the UK, is is hugely important. Uh, Stephen, I just want to thank you so much uh, for being my guest on today's uh, Middle East report, talking about these very very important issues. So, yeah, may God continue to give you strength and the fight to continue to uh, wake us up out of our apathy to defend Israel and the Jewish people, because ultimately our freedoms are under threat if we don't. Thank you, Simon. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. And uh, I just want to thank you for watching today's programme. It's a very, very serious uh, programme today because Israel is being threatened by this BDS legislation, which has huge implications, um, not only for Israeli-Irish relations, but also for the entire Irish economy, which would be absolute folly if uh, the Irish senators and politicians uh, decide to support this dangerous legislation that only singles out Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East, the only place where there is uh, freedom of worship and the only place where, where Christians are free from persecution in the entire Middle East. And Israel is a lamp unto the nation. So uh, I'm going to leave you with this uh, very famous song by Ari Lesser talking about Hamas. And uh, this is exactly the people that some of these Irish uh, parliamentarians are supporting, genocidal terrorist organisations. So thank you for watching today's Middle East Report. Israel, that's cool, but if you support Hamas, you're a fool. Unless you want radical Islamic rule and stockpiles of rockets at your kid's school. Remember, they send their own people out strapped with suicide bombs blowing up in their lap. You think they seek peace? That's a bunch of crap. They just want to wipe Israel off the map. Let me start off slow so you don't get lost. Palestinians are not the same as Hamas. Though they may live in the same location, Hamas is a terrorist organization. They might call themselves freedom fighters but they're just like the Taliban and Al-Qaeda using lethal force against Arabs, Jews and anyone else who disagrees with their views. Due to their violence they have been banned from Jordan, Canada and Japan, the whole EU plus the UK, Australia, Egypt and the USA. But in Israel the situation is harder. They kidnap Israelis and use them to barter. If one murders Jews he's raised as a martyr. Just take a look at Hamas's own charter. They want Islam controlling the whole Middle East, two states don't interest them in the least. So tell me how Jews are supposed to make peace with the enemy who just wants to see us deceased. You want to criticize Israel, that's cool, but if you support Hamas, you're a fool. Unless you want radical Islamic rule and stockpiles of rockets at your kid's school. Remember, they send their own people out strapped with suicide bombs blowing up in their lap. You think they seek peace? That's a bunch of crap. They just want to wipe Israel off the map. Gazans are living in poverty. But Hamas just went on a building spree of underground tunnels through which they planned to unleash attacks on Israeli land. They used 80,000 tons of cement, a valuable resource which could have went to development of new apartments to help Palestinians who can't pay the rent. Iran has given them hundreds of millions, but they shoot it all at Israeli civilians. Their rockets get blown by the Iron Dome while their own people are starving at home. And it's 
even worse on the battlefield where they wield civilians like human shields. Israel uses weapons when its people are threatened, but Hamas uses people to protect its weapons. If I was from Gaza, I would be pissed. But to be honest, I wouldn't resist because Hamas's rivals all wind up dead, tortured before they get shot in the head. So you want to criticize Israel, that's cool. But if you support Hamas, you're a fool. Unless you want radical Islamic rule and stockpiles of rockets at your kid's school. Remember, they send their own people out strapped with suicide bombs blowing up in their lap. You think they seek peace? That's a bunch of crap. They just want to wipe Israel off the map. <laughs> Israel, that's cool, but if you support Hamas, you're a fool.